It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. He's the first contact. And when you do this to teams and you run the ball like this, this is the reaction. Like, is anybody going to do their freaking job? Is anybody going to get off a block? Is anybody going to help me out here? Like, that's what happens to teams that get gassed like this. Your free safety, as good as Mika is, is like, I can't do this by themselves. Is anybody going to get busy tonight? Is anybody going to make a freaking play? Brian Baldinger doesn't just like football. He loves football. Football! Football, yeah! yeah. yeah. Football! Yeah. Football! Yeah. Get some! Nice. I just, I'm just envisioning Brian Baldinger just in a dimly lit room, a couple football candles lit. Oh, yeah. He's got some, some low key, like 70s NFL film music playing in the background, just firing up the film, just shouting at clouds, Alex. You know Baldy's all about it. He, he, he's probably in that room. Remember that Packers guy you showed me that's sitting in the corner of the room with like the cord- the coordinates to where he was? Remember that guy the the you were showing me on the YouTube? He's probably in a room like that for sure. Just yeah. curled up on a beanbag, the big one. Yeah, just yeah. He's just, got the so he, he and a, a few guys have the finger thing boonie where like it's rearranged oh. permanently and they don't I don't know if you can't get that football. fixed or like if you choose not to. No. As a football you choose not to. You choose, you choose yeah. not okay. to, man. But yeah, because he's you. got the finger like going off. Like it's great. Yeah, it's let's, like, uh, let's 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 go that way. Like what? which way? No, the best is like when they try to cross their hands and they're all like this, and they're like, ah, oh, God, <laughs> it's great. You're like, oh my God, I can't put him in. Size. <laughs> well, it's gentlemen. So it's uh, Tuesdays with our guy, 10-year NFL vet. He played in a Super Bowl, which is something that the three of us uh, can't quite say. His name is Alex Boone. This is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment, presented by our friends at Surly and TCL. TCL, if you're watching Vikings games and you're frustrated, I've seen a couple videos of, like, like I saw a Steelers fan, like, break his TV. Yeah, just uh, don't kill yeah. the messenger, okay? The TCL TV is just here to give you a beautiful viewing experience the results of the game, TCL is not responsible for, but they are responsible for delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. So speaking of mangled hands and, and injuries here, so Dalvin Cook dislocates his shoulder two weeks ago. He basically has 10 days between shoulder dislocation, maybe some torn stuff, and a Thursday night game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he was doubtful. I mean, he was basically like, there's no way that guy plays. Like, what, you know, they'll give him the extra sort of half bye week, right? He'll come back against the Bears on Monday night. He says, no, I'm playing. Just put a brace on it. I don't know. Stick a needle in it. I don't know, I don't know what it takes mm. for him to play with a dislocated shoulder. He mm. runs for 200 yards and gashes the Steelers, helps the Vikings get out to a 29 nothing lead, which they almost blew, and we can talk about that. Where does Dalvin Cook, 11 days after mangling his shoulder and running for 200 yards rank among just sort of a badass play through injury moments that you've seen Alex I mean that's top 10 I mean it's got to be especially being the running back being the one guy that's got to be able to drop your shoulder and like Ugh. you could say a lot of things about how this season's gone but what Dalvin Cook did on Thursday night was beautiful you can't tell me he was not pissed off and he was ready to kick someone's ass I mean like the from jump the first play 20 yards like just barreling down the A-gap. And I'm thinking the same thing. Like, dude, if he gets hit, I don't know how long he's going to last, but he was just terrorizing people. And he was the reason they won. Think about it. I mean, they come out, and I don't think the Steelers thought they were going to get punched in the mouth as hard as they did. I thought this, I think the Steelers came in thinking, hey, these guys can be had. We just got to sit Cam and TJ on them, and then the rest will be ours. And all of a sudden, Dalvin just buries that whole idea. And that was one of the things that, like, demoralized them in the beginning. But they did regroup very well at halftime. All right, how painful is that? Because, like, I got no clue. It looks like it hurts like hell. But but to do... Sounds like what... a Judd Athlete challenge. No, Let's no, dislocate no, your no, shoulder. No, we go, a Judd. Idea. No, <laughs> no, you both can buzz off. I'll put it kindly on this show. Uh, but, but give us an idea of the pain threshold that a person must have to not only play th- through that, but to your point, to take a ton of hits and to just keep coming back. I mean, it's a lot. I think I'll even, like... There's some injuries that I heard about guys like torn cartilage off ribs, 
Uh, I knew I played with guys that had torn triceps, wow. torn subscaps. I mean, there was guys that played with concussions. I mean, there's a lot of things. But the, my thing was always going into this. In this league, there can never be a complaint because the paycheck has never bounced. So you can't sit there and be like, hey, listen, I'm really beat up. Like, hey, man, we're paying you to do a job, right? And and not only that, but, like, when you get into a rhythm of a season, you won't want to be the one guy that takes you out of that rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of a sudden, you're gelling really well. You're grooving. And then all of a sudden, you're kind of like, hey, man, I twisted my ankle a little bit. Could I play? Probably could. But, man, I don't want to. And then all of a sudden it's like the offensive line suffers because of it, or all of a sudden they give up three sacks and all of a sudden things start going all helter skelter on everybody. And it's like, dude, listen, this game is painful. And at some point you can almost look at it as like, it's a challenge. Cause it's like, can I play against one of the best players in the NFL with a torn ACL or can he do this with a torn elbow? You know, it's like and you, the guy before the game, but like, bro, this could be so exciting, right? You'd be like, dude, good luck. And you know, they're hurting. I mean, they're in so much pain, but who's going to, who are you going to complain to? And who's really going to listen? I mean, when I was in San Francisco, we had a trainer and I loved him, Jeff Ferguson. And he used to have a saying, and it was so terrible because he'd be like, Hey man, don't complain about the pain. Just deliver the baby. Okay. And I was like, Oh my <laughs> God. Oh my God. Like, oh, then, no, oh. like, dude. No, I'm not even kidding you. I'm on the ground. I just tore my ACL, and he comes over. Oh. Hey, Brother Booney, what's going on, man? Brother Booney. He's like, hey, man, your mama's watching this game. You might want to get up and get off the field. Wow. I'm like, Ferg, my knee, it don't feel right. He's like, that means get up now. I'm like, I'm up. I'm up. I was kidding. Totally kidding. It's he was, okay. Get up now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, up. I'm up. Hey, brother Booney. I've, I've always wondered, like, what you know, like, I wonder in <laughs> baseball, nice like, what is the first baseman and the guy who gets on first base talk about? Like, when yeah. when someone's just like writhing in pain on the ground in an NFL game, and the trainer comes out, like, what, like, what, what do they do? Do they, like, where does it hurt? <laughs> oh, like, like, what are those conversations? I think they're really trying to hold back a laugh, a serious laugh, because sometimes you'll crawl up on a guy and you're in the heat of the moment and emotions are high and they're kind of squealing or they're screaming and you're kind of like, dude, calm down, calm down. And you see them, they come up and they're like, okay, okay. And they look at their other doctor like, is he for real with this? Oh my God. All right. All right. Calm down, Bone. Calm down. What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay. Let's get the hell off the field. Like you look like an idiot. Like that's what they're telling you. You look, we look, we all look stupid. Okay, I'm in a suit. I'm on one knee. Look at the dry cleaning bill. Dude, come on. Get up. Let's go. And you're like, okay, I'm calm. Your ankle's in three places. He's, Dude, do you see these jeans? Do you see how much these cost? I had to press these jeans. Do not get blood on these khakis. Brother, okay. oh, brother Booney might be my favorite thing of all time. Bro, was brother Booney. Coming out? So yeah. Brother Boone, I implore you to get up. That was so fun. He you. Have you seen the light? Yeah, and then guys would laugh at you too if you were on the ground for too long. Oh man, it's it was fun. They don't. I don't see him doing that a lot anymore. I got to think on the Dalvin Cook front. I got to think that that meant a lot. I mean, this team oh, yeah. has been. I think this team kind of hates the coaches. Like, there's clearly some turmoil and seasons, you know, just on the line every week in terms of playoffs. And like, this dude goes out there, runs for 200 yards, puts up one of his best performances, and you know that every time he took a hit. Like he didn't show it in the game, but, no, but I mean, hell, I'm cringing every from my couch. Like every time that dude takes a hit, I'm guessing that plays over really well in a locker room, Booney. Oh, for sure. Leadership role, not only that, but toughness and guys will look to you. And I feel like it gives you so much more clout because, you know, you're not the guy that's leading from above. You're the guy that's leading from in front. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, listen, everybody knows I'm banged up. Everybody knows how to get me out of this game. And they're still not going to do it like that to me. is There's only so many guys that you can play with that are like, the whole world knows there's something wrong with me, but I don't care. I'm still going to come out here and just rage and I'm going to go crazy. And it was like, it was almost like amazing to watch because you kind of be looking at the guy before the game and you'd be like, man, this dude is so hyped. Like I remember one time Justin Smith was hurt really bad and like just to see him sitting there before the game, like getting into it. And I was like, this is going to be insane i i was like telling people like wait until you see what he does to these guards like he's so pissed because he had to i think i think a lot of times in your mind you have to go to a weird place because it is so painful that you're like if i don't go there and i don't hate everything i'm gonna feel everything and by the way and like the injury report comes out i mean it's very public i mean the steelers go into that game thinking and, and it looked like this to my amateur eye too like they're trying to land hard on dalvin when they're tackling oh, yeah. him, right like they're oh yeah they're probably, I mean, they're that not makes, trying to end a guy's life, but like maybe they are, but, but they're like, the they, they know he's got a show. Like they're probably trying to lean on him. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And I think the thing is, too, like when you come out of the backfield, you see a lot of the linebackers, like even on pass plays, they're always going to take a shot on you now. And it's always like if I can just hit that shoulder, if I can get one more hit on it, what's it going to do for it? But then you think, too, like there's some guys, and this is a very rare case, but like Dalvin could easily fit into this role of guys that like they fall on this pain threshold where like when they know people are picking on them and they're hurt, they fall into this like crazy like LeBron. Like the minute you piss him off, you know it's over. Like he's just going to turn up and like Dalvin is like kind of showing us that. And this last week to me was a huge like going in you you pull your shoulder out i don't care who you are that hurts and you put it back in and then you just have grown men hitting you all day like damn the the mental toughness that he must have had for that and especially a thursday night game because you know people are trying to bring it physically like the rest of your team is beat up the rest of their team's beat up it's basically who can come beat up who's the quickest and the fastest and the vikings did that so i'll I'll preface this by saying personally i am not passing judgment one bit but how does that play? So, so when this guy's sh- shoulder pops out and he doesn't miss two full weeks and on a Thursday night comes back, how does that play in a locker room where where Barr has like bagged out because his knee hurts? And I, you know what? He might be hurt bad. I don't know. But but he but I, I believe it was the Browns game that they fully expected him to play. And Barr came in and basically said, I can't play. And they're like, What? And then he's like, I can't go. Sorry. How does in that weird world that, that you're discussing, how how do those juxtapositions play in the room where Cook is basically has an arm hanging by a thread and Barr's like, I got a chronic problem here. I can't play. Those two worlds never cross ever, ever, because that's a business. To, that's business. It's nothing more than that. And two, I don't know your pain threshold. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't hold you. I can't hold you accountable if I don't know how you're really feeling. Like, if somebody were to look at me and I feel like a lot of my teammates were kind of like, dude's just beat up. Doesn't matter. Like, if I was ever like, hey, man, I'm in a lot of pain. They were like, okay, he's really beat up. Like, they knew. Like, but there were times where you look at your teammate and they'd be like, oh, God, you'd be like, dude, it's just a simple hit. Like, some guys just don't have the pain threshold that they can withstand things. And then to make somebody go out there and do it too. Like you got to think what's going through his mind mentally. Like a knee is so insane, especially for somebody that has to use it so much in so many different ways, laterally straight ahead. Like you're tackling running backs, you're covering receivers. Like there's so many different things that you think if the slightest little tweak happens again, it could put you back even more. Like I understood guys. And there were times where you're right, Judd, I didn't agree with it. And I was like, you know what? I think you're being kind of a pussy. And I think you should probably just step up a little bit more. But they were like, hey, man, this is how it goes. And I was like, I got it. That's cool. We'll work without you. Like, there's nothing I can do that's going to change your mind. And I think sometimes people think that there's – like, they're like, aren't you going to talk to him? And do what? I'm not going to help him make a business decision. What if him coming back blows out his knee and he never plays again? And then he looks at me like, dude, what the hell? Like, sometimes you got to take a step back and be like, these guys want to have a career. They want to play for 20 years. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, there are, like – you know, the guys that like, I'm not going to name any names, but there are a few old linemen that have gone on injured reserve for a finger, and I'm not going to name any names. So we Let's all go. Come on, name a name. I'm not going to name any names. You coward. I'm not going to name any names. No, no. NFC West, NFC North. They, they told me to Give us initials. No, there was a lot of phone calls that said, listen, you got to lay off this guy. He's He's not. He doesn't like you talking about him. I said, all right, I'll stop. He knows who he is. <laughs> I I know Hold on a second. Is. Google Vikings offensive line. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm Googling a Viking. it right now. Not a, not a Viking. Not a Viking. Not no, a Viking. Okay, we got that. Okay. No, no. But it's, you know, you know how it, it honestly, though, guys make their own decisions. And I, and the one thing I can tell you that is this when you do make a decision, you're going to have to live with how everyone feels about you off that decision. Because there have been times where guys have made decisions and people are like, all right, that's the last we'll ever talk to him again, ever again. Like, got it. I have a request. Can we turn the Christmas light? Can we turn the Christmas tree lights on? <sighs> like my kids. God. Yeah. I feel like all you have to do is just have to plug. You just have to plug the Christmas tree in. I mean, I no, no, big. I wasn't comfortable or anything. All right, let's. Uh, well, Alex plugs goes. the Christmas tree in. Let's talk about a can that never misses a game, and mm. that would be Surly Furious. Johnson oh, again. which is right here, of course. Yes. Yeah. So, so the Vikings win or or lose, I've got your ingredients to make every Vikings game day a winner. And that is if you saddle up to the local liquor store, you go out and you get yourself a Surly Furious, especially the best IPA. Well, they say it's in the state, but forget that. I say I say the five state. You know what? No, I say the world. The Surly, world. The world. And that's why I want you at Jay's Olga to show me your cans. 
Alex Boone just lit up his Christmas tree because he knows the perfect ornament for that tree would be a can of Surly Furies hanging right from it. That's right. I think we replaced the angel and the star on yeah. top of the trees. On yeah, top? Just a can of Surly Furious. No, no big deal, guys. Do that? Is that a beer can at the top of your tree? Yeah. 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 Huge right. fan. Yeah. Huge yeah. fan. That's right. Yeah. Not just any beer can, a Surly Furious beer can. You know, also uh, you could you could you could put a Justin Jefferson jersey up there. We're giving one away right now through the Score North app. You can register once per day this week by going to the Score North app. It's free to download. It's a central hub for everything we do here. All of our YouTube videos, all of Judd's written work, all of our podcasts across the board. And you can uh, go to the listener rewards section and you can enter the code word Jefferson for your chance to win a Justin Jefferson jersey. I saw him clapping back at the uh, the anti OBJ crowd on Twitter last night. So uh, he's uh, he's feeling very very festive on the internet. So go uh, go hit us up on the Score North app and uh, register to win a Justin Jefferson jersey. One more thing on Delvin Cook here. Get those nerds, nerds, nerds! So boy, this actually plays into the offensive line. They may have found something with Bradbury and Mason Cole. Bradbury has been has been he, he allowed zero pressures according to uh, uh, PFF in that game. But in the run game, Delvin Cook. Had a hundred yards before contact in that game last Thursday. It was ridiculous, dude. What? It was great. It started out great. I mean, the double teams up front were phenomenal. They were getting off the linebackers. Dalvin was making great cuts. There were so many times that they pinned him in. Like, did you notice on that one like forty yard run, TJ Watt just like comes down? I think it was Tyler Conklin came and just washed him down. The entire defense just. <sighs> I mean, they were. I, I really, I'm telling you, I think they came in like, we're going to punch these dudes right in the mouth and they're not going to be able to stop us. And instead, it was Dalvin, like, no, I got this for the first two quarters. And then after that, it kind of slowly started to fall apart. But, dude, the Mason Cole and the Garrett Bradbury thing in the middle, I kind of liked it for a while. I was like, man, this is really good. Garrett Bradbury's got to work a little bit better on some run blocking, though. Like, the linebacker level, we got to work on that a little bit. It almost feels like I, maybe. Maybe putting a guard next to him. And by the way, Mason Cole apparently was, was better and more comfortable at guard with the Cardinals, is what people were saying, than he was at center. So maybe, maybe guard him. Maybe he makes, I don't know, you tell us. Like maybe no, he makes it. Bradbury more comfortable than Ole Udo. For sure. And I think that he, I think the problem is sometimes when you put a tackle in there, they're just not comfortable in that tight space. You know what I'm saying? Like they over try to work things, they don't understand that, like, Everything is so critical, but at the same time, nothing is really that important. Like, you just don't want to give up ground. You just want to start a fight right at the line and go. And some tackles aren't built for that. They're built for more like space. You know, I eat space. Uh, if you try to make a move on me, I can recover because of my length. Whereas in the middle, it's like you don't – you. You typically don't see a lot of big moves. Like you see Aaron Donald in there. That's different, right? That's a big move. Uh, like even Cam Hayward. He's not even a big move guy. He's just a, I'm going to go right through you type of guy because he's so old. But at the same time, you look at these guys and they understand, hey, I just got to throw my hands as hard as I can and just give ground grudgingly. And Mason Cole was great. And you know what else I love? I love that he got that personal foul. Was I the only one that noticed that? Was I the only one that was like, dude, finally, somebody just does something to start a fight. For you said that last week. You Didn't said I? Some, you, you, you said sometimes the 15 yard penalty is worth it just to. What a perfect to play, tone, too. I guess. Right on the field goal, like, eh, what's the big deal? What's a kickoff anyways? Kickers, hate them. God, I hate them. <laughs> You're exactly right. Hey, so is, is Bradbury, uh, did, when you watch him play, does he have a future or or not? Because I'm teetering on he doesn't, but then, but then like, he'll come back in this game, Booney, and, and not be a complete mess. So, like, is this a is this a guy who is worth trying to continue to play, or if you were Spielman and the Vikings, should 2021 be it for him? It depends. I think that that's a huge question. I mean, I think it depends on them. who's in free agency. Who could you go get? Who could you bring in? Who would you want to bring in? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I going to go draft a guy? No, I am not. You guys already know I don't like young. O-lineman. Just not a fan of him right now. And I think that it takes time to learn in this league and you're in a win now mode with this team. And it's it turns into one of those situations where it's like, you know, let's see what he does going forward. I like the Mason Cole and Ezra Cleveland and him in the middle. I think the more the three of them play together, the better they're going to get. Like this is just the starting ground, which is exciting because this was a good team and this was a good front seven. And that's what people don't understand is that when you look at this team, they were based off of their defense for so many years. I mean, their defense has been ferocious forever. And now they're still like, 
they're trying to lean on it, but they can't as much as they want to. So this was a good test for the Vikings to come in on a short week with new guys and say, hey, listen, let's try this lineup now. Like people don't understand how hard that is to be like, hey, you move over here and you come over here and you're like, oh, my God, this is just going to be miserable. But they made it look really, really good. I think my, my guess is here, whenever Derrissaw is ready, and you know, hopefully it's an ankle, right, with Derrissaw? Yeah. That, that hopefully. Yeah, Ole fell on him. <laughs> Way <laughs> to just, go, you know, Ole. 330-pound guy no just falling deal. on your leg. Oh, that, yeah, my, yeah. my guess is that Derrissaw comes back in at left tackle, and they keep yeah. Bradbury and Mason Cole in their spots, and Ole Uda goes, just, just moves to, to that sixth-man spot, right? And it, and it helps. You know who that kind of helps, too, is like, it helps everybody in the sense of it's like, look, we kind of this is what we wanted to get to. And if it ends up working out, then all those moves look good. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to get Mason Cole looks ends up looking good. The Darisaw move looks good to draft him. Like all these things end up playing and they just need this group right here to continue to play better. So explain this, because this is what I totally don't get. And, to and, and that this comes in a year when the Vikings had expectations. So mm-hmm. like this was not a let's tre- let's test some kids out here. <laughs> right. How on earth do you go through um, the the camps uh, during the summer months and you say, okay, Wyatt Davis is not prepared t- to play. I mean, clearly they said that. Now I might agree, disagree, but at that point in time, he's basically benched. So then you move a guy who was a tackle to guard but under your nose the entire time is Cole, who you traded for, who, to Phil's point, graded out okay at guard. And now, and now because of injury, you've made those moves, and, and it's like, oh, this might be good. How did we not get to, in July, saying, all right, let's give Cole a chance to play a position he's played, and instead you take a guy who's completely foreign to guard and is a tackle, and make him a guard. Is there any explanation there? Like those are the type of things. Oh yeah. Where it's I just don't one. understand it. There's, you know, a lot of guys, times guys say when you're young, the more you can do, the longer you'll stay on a team. When you're one of the only guys that can snap a ball, I hate to tell you, Broby, but the chances of you starting at guard are not good because if the center goes down, we mm-hmm. need you. If you go down, well, then we have nobody. So oh. all of a sudden mm. it turns back into one of these like, hey, mm. the more you can do, the more you screw yourself sometimes because if you can snap a ball and add adequ- adequately understand a defense they're going to be like hey we can't have both our centers on the field at the same time because if they both get hurt nobody snaps the ball interesting it's like like having it's like having two catchers in baseball like you're not going to put one catcher in that makes sense so and then all of a sudden you don't ever because in your mind remember it's easy for people and i'm going to defend the coaches here because i saw a lot of this and this bothered me is that the media will always come down on them but when you're in the box you can't ever look out of the box right you can't step out and go well now what am i missing here you're like basically hey garrett bradbury's one mason cole is two you're not like well hey let's put them together somehow you're like that's how it has to go and then from there we fill in now we're in complete desperate mode and it's like i don't care who's out there i don't care who can snap a ball we'll find somebody if we miss both of them but we need to win a game and it was a great move because mason cole i'm telling you showing up and playing guard like that it's so much better when derisaw gets better because derisaw was playing really well before he got hurt yeah Interesting. See, that's see, that's why we keep you around that's here. What he brings yeah, us. Yeah, that's what hey you, guys. You, you, hey guys. you play the game like that. You just bring, you, know, you make us look like it depends with the Vikings yeah. coaching staff, Booney. <laughs> a little bit, not Merry a lot. Christmas they don't get them. a lot of it, you know. Look at that. See, fair. It's just a just a fair and balanced uh, show here on Purple Daily. <laughs> And, uh, and speaking of fair and balance, we've come to the point of the show where Declan wants someone's oh. ass. <laughs> No balance. Fired. Anxious no balance. millennial cowboy Declan with his new trendy glasses wants glasses. someone's uh, ass. Even though you had a prescription. Oh, I, I have pretty good eyes, actually. Uh, my uh, of um, in, in regards to my siblings, my my sibs all had glasses by like age seven. Uh, I didn't know I needed them until I took my permit test at 15, and I failed the vision test. Like, is this in French? No, dude, you, you need glasses. No, no I, you can't. You, you couldn't can't tell. See, you couldn't see. Read. I know. Uh, yeah, apparently <laughs> I couldn't see the blinking lights uh, on on the sides of my. Yeah, seventh it was a grade, thing. I could barely see a damn thing. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's just black smudges, yeah. right? Uh, no, man, you no. you might need some glasses. <laughs> I just can't see, you know, like street signs and stoplights at night. It's, it's fine. Yeah, it's it it's, 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 it's fine. Okay. It's, it's fine. But I can read in front of me mostly. Um. All right, so for the first time, I'm actually uh, I'm firing someone again. 
I haven't oh, done this wow. yet. Wow. I'm doing a repeat firing because no one listened it. to me the first time. I love okay? It. Repeat. Because this team got off with red hot, red hot expectations. Oh, I already know. And now they're they're in danger of not missing the playoffs. I think they'll still make it, but they're going to have to go through the road. And when you opt to not have your running back touch the football at all in the first <laughs> oh half, God, you're, you're a GD buffoon. What? Josh Allen's a great athlete, dude. He's a great athlete. But what the hell are you doing? And then the payoff is you're down three scores. You're going to have to pass the ball the entire time. Brian Dan will come on down. Your ass is fired again, dude. You're fired again. Oh, wow, this defense dude, he's a has held head up. coaching candidate. Dude, I want are nothing to do with the Vikings. Idiot. No, no, I want no, nothing no, no, to do no, no, with no, no, him, no, no, man. No, they're not. No, they're not. not at all. The sure. Bills' defense is like first in the league in yards, third in points. They are now seven and six because of offensive play calling and wow. decision making. They are basically the 2021 Bills are eerily similar to the 2018 Vikings. It's it's almost a direct wow. parallel. You have very good defense. You have a very good offense. You have offensive weapons up the up the wazoo, and now you're in danger of missing the postseason and or having to go on the road for the entire NFC. Brian Dabble, come on down, dude. Love Your him. ass is fired again. I love this. Guy. I want nothing to do. I love it, dude. Do I not come towards it. my team. I love it. My team. I mean, how do you not? You're, so you're, you're playing, first of all, you're Buffalo, right? And I'm all for airing the ball out here, all right? I'm all for, I'm all for the nine routes and uh, whatever you football guys call the, uh, the deep ball. But uh, I don't know, might, might, might want to mix in one running back handoff in the first half. I don't know. Dude, I'm a, they're my biggest pet peeve right now, the Bills, because everybody was so high on them, and it was like, why? There's no run game. The entire offense goes through Josh Allen. If Josh has a bad game, they lose. If he has a good game, they win. If he has a mediocre game, they win because their defense wins it for him. And if he has an average game, maybe they lose because, I mean, dude, when you have no offensive line protecting you and you have literally no one to hand the ball off to and you're the sole guy back there, it's just such a recipe for disaster. No matter how good your defense is, look at the Jacksonville game. They lost six to nine. Like their defense had to be like, dude, really? Nine points. Y'all couldn't score nine. Is that Stefan Diggs in the corner? Did you dress today, Stefan? You did? We could only score nine points and that guy was on the field. You guys suck. I mean, you'd have been, you'd have been hearing about it in the showers like you guys blow. I'd have been like, I know. I know. I don't know what that was. I don't know. From your coaching staff? Oh, no. It would have been from the other defense. Like, oh, dude, the what the defense. hell okay. was that? All right. All right. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Point. I mean, so so Brian, Brian, uh, is it Dable or Dabble? I can never. I think it's Dable. Brian Dable. So, yeah, not he's, I mean. Anymore. working here anymore. We, not not going to be working here anymore. We fixed the glitch with Brian. Personally, I think he's no, a very handsome man. I think, I you know, I think he's a very handsome guy. Oh, yeah. The ball shaved head. Shaved head, beard, kind of chubby look is really good for him. Not Boone and I with our great hair yeah it's great no. yeah but um so so we did we went through a list last week after they lost to the lions and we went through the list of offensive minded head coach candidates that keep popping up and, and he was one of them um kellen moore is another one you know he's oh. offensive coordinator for dallas he's like 32 years old but the one that we all so we all kind of graded our level of interest and the one that we collectively byron. had the most interest in was byron leftwich everybody loves and, him and you spent some time with him in arizona so i think the biggest worry there is are you? Would you be hiring a guy because of his proximity to Tom Brady? Like, like when Adam Gase got a head coaching job right. because he was Peyton Manning's offensive coordinator of the year that he threw fifty five touchdowns. It's like, well, Peyton Manning was running the offense. Right. So how do you? So what are your thoughts on it? You know, he's going to get a look at some point, and uh, and I'm sure the Vikings, if they fire Mike Zimmer, are going to go offense. So what can you tell us about Leftwich? I mean, Byron's so cool. Oh, when I was in the offense in uh, Arizona. He was our offensive coordinator, or not our coordinator. He was our, uh, he was like the QB's coach, but he was the coordinator. I mean, he was the one that was like kind of mainframe and everything. And like he was the one that broke everything down to understand why we were doing different levels on the receiving route. But dude, their offense is so fun because it's so different. It's so backwards compared to what you're used to. And a lot of that was because of Carson. And it kind of gives the quarterback a lot of like, wiggle room like if you don't want to pick up the blitz then you just got to know your hots and as long as you know your hots then we can do whatever you want up front but if you want to pick it up well then we're going to have different levels that you're going to hit like you're seeing this huge influx in the nfl and it's like showing up even more and more is like the receivers always look like a diamond you know what i'm saying like you see one side of the field always has like three receivers in a diamond pattern and then the other side will normally have like a levels formation with two more and it's like people are trying to spread out these defenses and who better to spread it out than a quarterback that used to play in the system that play in a, you know, what, how many years did he play? 15? 18? Yeah, he was in the league for 
He was in the league for a while. Long yeah. time, he was a starter right? for Jacksonville when they went yeah. to the playoffs. First yeah. round pick, yeah. Right. So and he's with Tom now. I mean, he there's so many things, but I think that's the biggest thing is people are like, oh, well, just because he's with Tom doesn't mean he knows everything. No, but I would tell you this that because he was a player, he understands the vibe in the room. He's a great dude. And two, when you're around Tom and you're the only guy that's literally back and forth with Tom day to day, you probably learn so many awesome things that you didn't, if you didn't know already, you know what I'm saying? Like there's only so many things you could know in football. You can't just continue to know forever and ever. It's not like a knowledge of, you know, infinite wisdom. It's like, eventually you get it. All right, well, that's two, that's one, that's three, that's four and six. Like there's not much else you can do. You know what I'm saying? And when you talk to these guys, I think what they're starting to do more of is understand why people have these tendencies, what they're doing on defense and saying, Hey, listen, these are the guys we want to go after. And they always have a great game plan. And two, you know, when you come into an offense like this, it's so easy. It is so – look at Stefanski. He walked into it in Cleveland. I have two phenomenal running backs. I'm basically a run-first team, and I just play action off of that. That's all I got to do. Like, you wonder sometimes how, how, how do you lose? How do you lose a game when all you got to do is hand it off 45 times? I'm concerned that maybe you guys forgot what game you were playing. You know what I'm saying? Like it happens to every head coach. They fall into this. And I could tell you the exact play that happened during the Chiefs-Browns game this year. Stefanski went out. Like I think it was the second series. He comes out five wide the first play. It's like, you you failed. You have failed the quiz already. You never come out five wide on a first down on a run first team. You come out in 23 personnel and you let that defense know, I'm going to bury your soul underneath the stadium. This is so good. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. And that, but you talk. What's the one thing Kevin's never done? Kevin's never played the game. Like When you play the game, you understand, I'm here to set the message early. We run this field. We run the tempo. We run the pace. And when I want to slow down, I'll slow it down. If I want to speed it up, we're going to speed it up. But when I come out here and I play into your hand and I do what my team's not good at, well, then I look stupid. And it's what a lot of these coaches do now, and it pisses me off. Yeah, so I, I heard a great explanation after the Rams-Cardinals game last night that the Rams started – this year, basically doing exactly what you're talking about, you right. know, five wide, and they, and and the commentator, I forget who said, um, when they played San Fran, San Fran basically said, "You've gotten away from what makes you good, and we're going to expose you." Yeah, and they did. And McVeigh, smart enough, he he went back and watched, and was like, "Oh my God, they're right. They're so right." And so so since that game. The Rams basically went back to, to saying, you know, it's not that we can't pass, but they fell so in love w- with the pass that they abandoned the run too much, and now they don't, and and now it's back to being in sync Balanced. and in groove. Yeah, but yeah. that's so, but that's so in- intriguing because the pass is so important now, which I buy, right. um, and and I'm all for trying to use that facet of the game, but it makes perfect sense that you also can't say first half, no carries for our backs. That's fine. Cause it's not fine. No, no. That's what and, I love about this game. And it has to be complimentary. And I agree with you. And you know, the one thing about this game too, that's like crazy is that these coaches, I feel like they feel the pressure so much more and they're so like, we're going to be the next guy to develop this instead of being like a Kyle Shanahan. And, and I, people are always like, man, you give Kyle so much love. And I'm like, I give Kyle a lot of love because number one, you can tell he doesn't care what anyone thinks. And I totally think that's awesome. Like everybody should be like that. But two, he knows the formula. We are a run first team. I must hand the ball off at least 25 times today or else our offense didn't even try to do anything. And he'll do it. And there's times where you're like, this is boring. But then all of a sudden it starts to pop. And that's what he wants in his offense. And then all of a sudden you forget where George Kittle is because you're so worried about the backs. And he's running down the seam on a play action. And everyone's fighting. And you're like, dude, he did it again. Like these coaches are so great. Now there are times where the players just don't show up. And they can't make run lanes. And they're running. And they're like, hey. I get what you're trying to do. Like in this last game, some I was reading something and somebody was like, Kirk Cousins throws two interceptions. It's like, well, eventually he's going to throw them. Like all year he's been great. Eventually they will catch up to you. And when they do, they weren't even really his fault. So I don't even know. Like there's got to be a new stat. If the receiver hits it and it goes off of him, it should be something completely different. Because there's going to be a lot of QBs lately like, bro, you should have caught that. That hits you in the hands. By the way, there is a stat for that. You just just talk to the analytics guy here. Oh, here okay? we go. Oh, the, oh, analytics are here. What is it called, called a it, yak it, minus drop? Wow, yes. It's called turnover worthy play. So Nerd. if I – so and it could be like they they, they oh, could include oh, like fumble. So if I words. if I throw a pass, <laughs> it bounces off your idiot hands 
<laughs> and into the arms of a safety. That is not a turnover-worthy play on me. I did my job. It's now your fault. This sounds so difficult because it's a turnover-worthy job, not on you. But I mean, it's, like, it, I mean, it's turnover-worthy because it's your fault. You dropped the ball. Here uh, we go. Here we go. <laughs> but it's not the quarterback's fault. No, it's somebody's well, it's, fault. Well, and by the way, fault. and the first rule of Fight Club is it's never Kirk Cousins' fault ever. All right, yeah, like that's the first rule. Ever. So, so on, on the Byron front, I think one thing that's really hard to figure out, especially like if you're just media jackals and fans like we are, is you can see if a coordinator based on the product on the field can scheme for the most part, right? Like you can look right. at offenses that are performing at a high level, and usually that's like where the candidates come from. Like, look at this offense that's performing really well. Right. Let's go talk to that guy. But there's a huge difference, and the Vikings have learned this a couple times throughout their history. There's a huge difference between hiring someone who's great at scheming and film breakdown and coordinating, which I would argue like those have been things that Mike Zimmer has been great at defensively for a large chunk of his career, and finding an actual leader of 53 guys and a coaching staff. Like when I look at John Harbaugh, I think – Okay, I don't really care what his background is, if he's a special teams coordinator or whatnot. Like, that guy leads a room. Mike Tomlin leads a room. Bill Belichick, right? And 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 so that's what you have to figure out. If you fire Mike Zimmer, okay, is Byron Leftwich, and this is where I'll defer to you, like, is Byron Leftwich a good schemer who's, like, a good coordinator and a guy to have on staff? Or is he a leader of 53 guys and he's, and he's not just going to skimp on a Thursday meeting with, like, his quarterback, which I wouldn't expect him to because no. he is a quarterback, but you know what I'm saying. No, 100%, and I know what you're saying, but, I, I mean, you don't know until somebody gets in that situation. And I agree with you, and I think that's the one thing that's flawed with this. And I think that a lot of times when you look at this, like, from an owner standpoint, if you're going after a new head coach, what's the one thing I'm going to look at? How, how is he going to mesh with my quarterback? I don't care about anything else. How does he fit with my quarterback? And more importantly, does his system work? Like, obviously, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to go out and be like, hey, Giro, come on over. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kirk can't run the ball. So that, that offense fits no purpose here. But I think the most important thing is, what are you trying to envision with this offense? Where does it go? If the first thing isn't Dalvin Cooks wins rushing title of every year you have failed as an offensive coordinator in mind or as a head coach because that should be going forward what you're trying to do this is how we're going to implement who we are it's going to protect our o-line it's going to protect our quarterback it's going to open up our receivers on these one-on-ones i mean you saw last game the minute dalvin starts running the outside gets put at a disadvantage because when you're filling the box you can't protect the outside right like it's like if we're going to beat you here well then all of a sudden we're going to snake one over here like What's so weird is like Kubia kind of had a really good game last week and it really worked out well. And it was kind of like, man, this is really nice. They need to find somebody like when you're watching, you're like, if this would have been like this all year, that'd have been great. And to me, what better than a former player, a guy that understands like, but I think so many people are afraid of former players because we know too much and we know that it doesn't take eight billion hours of film session to break everything down like there's a more efficient way to do it instead of sitting there and watching sack tape on friday and you're like i really don't want to watch every single person lose right before the game like i want to watch people winning before the game (laughs) you guys need to watch this it'll help you get better you're like no i'm just watching people get beat after beat after beat and then all of a sudden in the game what what hits your mind on the third down oh man he got beat on third down you suck same third and six the ball was on the right (laughs) i'm not good like it is here I kind of emulate him a little bit. You're worthless. Be, yeah, you're like just the, Alex all, Boone. All worthless. of a sudden, the you're mental clumsy. midget in your mind, right? You're like, man, I really wish I didn't watch that sack tape on Friday. That was a bad idea. But this, it's these these things, and you're like, as a player, you see it, and then you're like, I would never do that. And that's when they're like, never allowed to coach. Would you say you'd never make them run extra? Never allowed to coach. Got it. Not coming in early. Never allowed to coach. Like it's just like they like to torture you sometimes. But wouldn't a, a, a guy who, who played QB for an extended period in the league be good? Like oh, yeah. he's he's going to get stuff. And and I'll you know what? If you are a successful uh, player at that position for a long time, the one thing that I think that you know for sure is that guy can lead. Like Kirk's not so so great, but there's a lot of guys who it, it's impressive. Uh, so I would think that there would be some selling points as far as trying to lead a group of men just through the position that you played. And if your background there was was being a guy that was liked and probably more importantly than liked, respected as well. 
Yeah, for sure. And I think as a player, you're going to be seen as a player's coach. So I just think it makes it harder when you're a player, because if if I know Byron's coming in to be my head coach and I'm like, this guy played 15 years, he knows how I feel. I'm your whatever, seven. He knows I'm beat up, banged up. He's going to be cool. So then instantly, like you gain your clout. But it's like over time is what we see. Like, are you cool every day? Are you the same guy every day? Are you tough on us about the same things? Do you care about little things more than the big things? You know what I'm saying? Like there was times in my career where head coaches would come in and we'd have a three hour discussion about nothing. And you'd be like, that wasted most of our day. We could have been watching blitz reels or we could have been doing this, but instead we're talking about something stupid at a Christmas party that maybe happened, maybe didn't happen. Like nobody knows, you know what I'm saying? Like it's one of these things where it's like, Hey man, there's a way to go about our business. And I think the one thing is like when you come in every day and you hold everybody accountable and it's so hard nowadays because I feel like some coaches want to be your friend and they want to be the guy that you can be cool with. You know what I'm saying? That if you come in and I'm like, Hey, you're, you're, I mean, Harbaugh, you're 10 seconds late, make it right. Like there was no question. It was never like, well, let me tell you, because he was like, no excuse is a good excuse. I don't care. I'm taking your money. I'm just giving you a heads up. And it was like, you couldn't fight it, but it was like that every single day. Not one person got slack cut for him. And it was like, after a while, you'd be like, all right, well, he treats Anquan and Patrick Willis like this. Then I guess he's treating everybody the same. I guess I can't have a lot to complain about. You know what I'm saying? Like it's over like the first six months that you take over a head coaching job. The guys are just constantly watching you. What's he doing? Is he saying what he's doing is really happening? Is he showing up? Is he, is he on everybody the same? Or is he letting some guys slide because they're cool or, you know, these are the things that you just don't know. And everybody assumes, oh, they'll be a great leader, but you're right. I think that is the one thing that so many guys eventually see your true colors. And they're like, I don't know if I want to follow that. Yeah. Speaking of accountability, Interesting. How, how about Judd losing 30 pounds? over the past couple months mm. thanks to the accountability structure at livia i that's mean that's ex- exactly right my, my friends at livia weight control centers have me as phil just said down approximately 30 pounds i i started about two months ago 240 didn't look so good little from puffy, the fat house to the penthouse puffy. judd zolgad 210 right. now on my way to 200 pounds and the best part is i know i'm going to stay there and in a season to believe we are giving you a reason to believe it's the best deal of the year. Save 50% off the program. First visit is free. 50% off the program. And your first time in is free. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Livia.com. L-I-V-E-A.com. This offer is going to end within the next week and a half or so. So, again, if you want to start to shed the pounds as a Christmas gift for you or perhaps for a loved one. 855 go L I V E A Livia.com. Shed the pounds. Shout out to our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company, too. If you're a business owner out there, Federated specializes for over a hundred years in risk management, bottom line protection, employee protection. Just make sure you've got all of your ducks in a row when it comes to things that could harm your business. Uh, that's where Federated has uh, has been giving business owners peace of mind, like I said, since the early 1900s, based in Owatonna. So check them out at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. Uh, before we peace out here for the show, so, Booney, the Vikings are about to play. So they got four games left, yep. and, uh, and two of those games are going to be played in Chicago next Monday night, cold weather, and then Green Bay in what mm-hmm. early January Love at Lambeau it. Field. So you got Love a couple it. classic NFC North cold weather, black windy, oh yeah, black and blue division. Uh, talk about cold weather football. Let me tell you something. Cold weather. You know what you're gonna do? Football. You're gonna run that ball. Run that damn ball. You're going to run that damn ball so many times because it gets heavy in the cold and it's hard to catch. And you know what sucks? And don't ever tell anybody I said this. But when you get smacked in the arm by a D lineman, like, and it's not even when you're expecting it. It's when they walk by you to their huddle. They'll smack you in the back of the arm and you're like, son of a Because you know it hurts. Don't act like you don't know that when somebody smacks you, you're like, oh, bro, it is so hot. But they'll walk <laughs> by and like they'll clip you like just – just enough that you're like, oh, I'm going to cut him so hard next. I swear <laughs> to God, I'm going to get him. You know, but it's fun, though, because when you get out there and, like, you don't really notice the breathing as much as, like, in the early games in the season. Like, sometimes on a third down, you'll catch yourself breathing. In a cold game, you're more, like, you're so focused on the game because you're, like, not trying to think about how cold it is and you're trying to think about so many things that you don't even realize what's going on. And then after the game, you're like, wait, did we run the ball, like, 40 times? Like, that's great. Yeah. Love it. 
cold worse in in Chicago or Green Bay? Green Bay for sure because we played the uh, was it? not the not the conference championship. We played again. There was like negative thirty, and it was the worst field I've ever played on because it was like icicles and it was supposed to be heated and nice and like <laughs> this is it. This was is that Vince the, what was, the, was that the, what was the playoff game where Cap ran for like a buck eighty or something? Was oh, that no, at that Green was, Bay? No, 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 that, no was that, was in, that was in San Fran. Okay. Fun fact about that game: first play of the game, pick six the other way. And it was like, remember how I talked to you about like sometimes in those moments you like look at people and they just look like you just pissed off the wrong dude. I look at Cap as because we were setting, and as I hit my guy, I saw the ball thrown, and I saw I forget who it was. It took it back, but he takes it back, and all of a sudden I turn, and I see Cap, and he's like, "Oh, it's on." And I was like, "Oh, dude's about to go off." And he went to zero, like, "Yo, I want the ball, and I want it now." And I was like, "Here we go, boys!" It was that was one of the best games we ever played. That was so yes. fun kicking their ass, man. I, we still love playing them because we thought their defense was soft. The Bears, by the way, it's you know I I, I wouldn't say com- completely soft Bears defense, but you can no. run on, you can run on the Bears. The Bears Dude. have given up a hundred yards rushing yeah. in almost every game this season. Yeah, no, they're 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 depleted too. They're one of those teams that they're just beat up and and true like offensively, they're just they're a team that needs to find out what they're doing. And I don't think Matt Nagy's the guy for them. Like he's just no. he's too up and down. Oh, and no. you know, like the thing that with me is like it's the constant like. You play a game with six sacks, and then you play a game with seven sacks, and then you're like, dude, why are we why are we allowing this many sacks? Like eventually as an OC, I gotta be like, we should probably protect the investment of the next four years. He tipped his hand completely after year one, where he was great, right? Yeah. When the whole summer he did nothing but focus on the double doink kick miss. It's like, what are you doing, dude? He he like showed players that that game like four times. Yeah. It's like, what on earth? I mean. I'm sorry, but the majority of guys on a football team, there's no way in hell that they want to watch a kicker double doink and say that's the problem. Boink. Just no. fix that. Just fix that. Hey, goes back to what we talked about, it's like right? Blair like, Walsh, right? Like, who are you throwing the, under the bus? Who's who's really to blame? Like, had you come in and been like, "Hey, man, that's a team." Like, dude, we know the kicker lost the game. He doesn't need to be right. told he lost the game. Like, you know right. how people are like, "How does a kicker get treated?" He gets treated like everybody else. Like, a lot of times when they miss, we're just like, "Dude, do I even need to say anything?" No, the dude's in total shame right now. I don't need to walk by and punch him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, well, they're they're dude, they're golfers in shoulder pads. Like, can you imagine? Right. Can you imagine walking golfers. walking up to like you know? Long Ricky rope. Fowler or like uh, you know Slam Colin, him into a Colin, locker. Colin yeah. Morikawa and being like, dude, you remember, <laughs> remember when you hooked that drive? Like how just embarrassing that was. Like that dude, was just... <laughs> they know, right? So, but that's what I'm saying. Like that comes back to that whole like leadership in the team <laughs> yes. thing, and not only that, but even like Ryan Pace, like for Matt Nagy to not go out and find the playmakers that he could have. Like his offense is so easy if you just find people that can catch a ball. Their whole offense is based on like Kansas City. We're just going to stretch out the entire field. There's somebody in every inch of this field that we can throw it to and that was their biggest mistake they didn't find somebody sooner to throw yeah boys this has been a good session here this of talking ball here. Cooney, this is such fun stuff oh, i love i love this insight yeah, dude, seriously that, that christmas tree is all lit up too just that's that time of year man where's that surly's give me that surly's i'll put it on top here you go here you go i'm gonna hand it <laughs> right to like, the God, what happened to the angel no, you're like this is <laughs> kids. Away. wait 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 till 21 <laughs> or 18 the angels this passed the out angel. on the ground this yeah. is the angel you yeah, guys look at this hand well. does this hand not say joy joy <laughs> to the surly yes, oh my god there it is judd's christmas album coming out next yep. week in uh all Have retail stores a very tasty <laughs> surly judley christmas all right Maybe don't forget vikings vent line after that bears vikings game next monday it's the most interactive fan-friendly show <laughs> in minnesota sports but all right that's alex boone judd mackie declan We'll see you guys tomorrow on Purple Daily.